if we sin, we often follow it by repenting and asking Allah for forgiveness. But what do we have to do to have that repentance accepted by Allah? Do we simply need to ask Allah for forgiveness and believe that as He is merciful, He will forgive us or is there more to it? In this video, we will study the three-step process that Allah describes in the Quran that we have to follow for our repentance to be accepted. And I'm going to be using this diagram to explain it. In part one, we studied the basic conditions for us to even qualify for our repentance to be considered for acceptance. We studied a few verses to help us to understand what these conditions are. If you have not seen this video, please click on the link you see up here or on the link which I've provided in the description to this video. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have to do to get our repentance accepted by Allah, to be forgiven. First, take a look at this. Consider this, there is one straight path to success. This is the truth, Haq. This is the truth, the path that has been explained to us and given to us by Allah in the Quran. There are many other paths but they are all false. They are all wrong and they all lead to failure. Now, take a look at this person who is on the wrong path. He is sinning. He is undertaking wrong deeds. He is not following the instructions given to him by Allah in the Quran. Now, imagine if he wants to be forgiven for that. Let's see what the Quran says he needs to do. So first, we're going to look at Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is chapter 5, verse 39. Okay, so Allah says, فَمَنْ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ظُلْمِهِ But whoever repents after his wrongdoing. Let's stop here. Here we have our first step. The first step is to repent. When we do something wrong, the first step to be forgiven by Allah is to identify that we have done wrong, to acknowledge that we have done wrong, and to make a firm commitment to change and not to do that sin again. So, let's take a look at this person. So the first step he has to take is to identify and stop. He has to refocus his mind his intentions. He needs to commit to changing. That is repentance. That is the first step of having repentance accepted, which is to repent itself. Okay, step number one. He has stopped and is committed to change. Now many Muslims believe that this is enough. Many Muslims believe that if you understand you have done wrong, and you ask Allah for forgiveness and say to Allah that I'm committing to change, Allah will forgive you. But that is not the end of the story. Let's have a look at the next part of this verse. Okay, next step. Wa aslaha. This word is very important. Wa aslaha means to make amends. It means to correct, to make a correction, to rectify something that was wrong. And it means once you've corrected your mistake and rectified your mistake, you then start on the right path. You start doing the right thing. This is a very important step in having that repentance you made in step one to be accepted. Let's think about this using this example of the man again who was on the wrong path. So this person who we saw here, remember he has already stopped and he has committed to change. Step number two, it's to return to the original situation and get onto the right path by making amends, by rectifying the mistake, by
by compensating for the mistake, by obtaining forgiveness from the person to whom you may have committed that wrong deed to, and then to start your righteous deeds. So sorting out that mistake, rectifying that mistake is really important if you want your repentance to be accepted. For example, let's just say you have been lying to somebody. Step one would be to stop lying, to make a commitment that I will not lie going forward. Step two will involve making amends for lying, which means admitting to the person you lied to that you were lying and obtaining their forgiveness, convincing them that you will not lie again. That step of going back and rectifying is so important. You're trying to undo some of the harm that you've done. And back to this verse, then Allah says, Indeed, Allah will turn to him in mercy, accepting the repentance. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ رَحِيمُ Indeed, Allah is forgiving and Rahim. غَفُورُ Rahim is a very, very important phrase to understand because it is used so many times in the Quran and simply translating Ghafur as forgiving does not really do justice to that word. We will explain that later. Similarly, Rahim is often translated as merciful. Merciful does not describe the meaning of the word Rahim. Again, we will explain that in another video. Now, there are many verses which describe these two steps which I've just gone through. Another one is in Surah Al-An'am, which is chapter 6, verse 54, where Allah says in the second part of this verse, Your Lord has decreed upon himself mercy, that any of you who does wrong out of ignorance, now if you saw part one, you will know that one of the conditions of having your repentance accepted is that you did that wrong out of ignorance and then repent after that. That was step one. You repent, you make a firm commitment to change and makes amends. Again, the word here is وَأَسْلَحَ فَأَنَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمُ Indeed, he is forgiving and Rahim. Okay, so that's another verse which is describing steps one and two and one of the conditions that we discussed in part one. Now, there is another step as well. And this is described in Surah Taha, which is chapter 20, verse 82. In this Allah says, وَإِنِّي لِغَفَارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ And indeed, I am the forgiver of him who repents. وَآمَنَا Here when Allah says وَآمَنَا and believes, it means somebody who sticks to and follows Allah's instructions, which are contained in the Qur'an. So amana is important, again a condition. وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحًا And does righteous deeds. So remember, we spoke about how in step two, you have to start performing righteous deeds. That's still part of step two. ثُمَّ tada, And then remains guided. That is step three. To remain guided. To remain on the straight path. So let's take a look at what's happening with our brother over here. Step three is that he has to remain on that straight path. He must not come off it again. He must not go back to the original situation and start sinning again. He must not start performing bad deeds in that respect again. That is step three. And if this person does that, Allah says, his repentance will be accepted. Allah is Ghafurur Rahim. He will accept the repentance. That is Allah's mercy. That is Allah's forgiveness. So as you can see, repentance is not simply about putting up your hands towards Allah and asking for forgiveness. It is not a matter of reciting certain verses of the Qur'an before you pray. It is not about kissing the black stone near the Kaaba. 
Allah is telling us that if we want our repentance to be accepted, there are certain conditions that must be met and there are certain steps that we have to take. And if we take those steps, then Allah will accept our repentance. So I hope those three steps are now clear to you. There is still a lot to discuss. We still have to study what Allah means when he describes himself as Ghafoor Rahim. What does that really mean? And in terms of our sins, what happens to them once we repent and if they are accepted? Do they disappear? Are they accounted for on the Day of Judgment or not? How will our deeds be counted on the Day of Judgment? And what part does repentance play in that? All of this has been described in the Quran. All of this is so important for us to understand. Remember, the Quran is complete and it is fully detailed. Allah tells us everything in the Quran. It is for us to read it, to study it, to understand it, and then to apply it in our lives. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we upload new videos about the Quran every week. Until next week, Assalamu Alaikum.